that is your quality. So that's actually what will make you happy in life, is to follow your nature. So the challenge of our life is to use our nature in these different categories and for the pleasure of Krishna, connect it with the last nature and then everything becomes spiritual. Srila Prabhupada has said that food and eating, seeking, mating, defending, family, marriage is dharma, artha, kama. If it is not connected to Krishna, it is zero. Food is zero, family is zero, dharma, artha, kama is zero, all of them are zero. If you put one in front of zero, so many zeros, then you get something very valuable. So you have a family, you put one, you put Krishna in front, it becomes very valuable. And the more people you have in the family, the more valuable it becomes. Because you have so many zeros, uh, and then you put the one in front. If you have a big family, like seven people, then you have seven zero, that's a million. Then you have, with you put Krishna in front. And if you have lots of money, or if you have a high education in this world, they are valued very much. But if it is without a spiritual goal, without a spiritual connection, then unfortunately it is like a zero. Um, so therefore, we want to spiritualize, we want to make all of our relationships very, very happy and very meaningful and lasting, not temporary. We don't want to just have one relationship today, another relationship tomorrow with somebody. We want to have eternal relationships. So if we want eternal happiness, then we have to connect with the highest level of Ananda Maya. So, Jnana Maya. Jnana Maya, you get so much knowledge. Now I was talking to one lady who became a doctor today. She's in our Bhaktivedanta hospital. And she told me, oh, I spent, I wasted so many years trying to be a specialist, a super specialist in medicine. I should have just taken the regular thing. And I married so late in life, and then I got my child late in life. I wish I had not taken all those extra years of education and had just uh, settled down earlier. So this Gyana Maya, uh, we have to watch. We have to watch, is this going to really help me? Is this something I really want to do with my life? Or am I just following blindly? The most important thing is to see how can I make the connection with Ananda? How can I make the connection with happiness? How can I do my science in such a way that it will make me Krishna conscious? So the purpose of science, the real purpose, is to find out Krishna in that science. And there is a, now a new scientific theory, I don't know how new, it's called an intelligent design. Have any of you heard about that? Intelligent design theory. So that theory is that if you go to the smallest, smallest atoms, uh, what is making up everything, you will find that there is an intelligence behind it who made that atom. It's very, very difficult for the atom to come just from nothing or from an explosion. So there are some scientists who are using their science in the service of Krishna. Juta Karma also, he has his book, Hidden Archaeology, where he shows that, uh, you know, there's, they, they find a few bones and they think, well, it must be like this or it must be like that, but actually it, it is, it's their imagination how it, how it should be. And then there, we have the arts, of course, Prabhupada, very quickly, um, he had all of us singing and dancing and, and making pictures of Krishna, using the arts in a spiritual way. And if you, if you do connect whatever you're doing with Krishna, then you will have uh, an eternal happiness. So what else do we have? Thinking, feeling, and willing. Thinking, feeling, and willing. Now, suppose you have a loudspeaker, and you connect the loudspeaker to your mind, and so everybody can hear what you're thinking. But that'd be very interesting for everybody to hear, yes? 
<laughs> Would you like to do that? No. <laughs> uh, because um, most of our thinking is uh, not very good. Our mind is not our friend. So therefore, if you connect a loudspeaker to your mind and everybody hears your thoughts, they'll think, whoa, I never knew she was thinking like that. Um, it would be quite interesting. Because some people, I have a few friends who can read minds, so when, when you're with people like that, you really have to control your mind because they'll tell you what you're thinking. Um, so good thing uh, we don't have people like that mostly. But uh, thinking, feeling, and willing. Now feeling, so thinking, how can you use your thinking in the highest, with the, mixing it with the highest goal of life? Okay, maybe some of you can give me an idea. Does anybody have some idea? How can you use your thinking um, to connect with Krishna? Is there any way you can do that? Yes? Go shopping for Krishna. Okay. Now, normally when you go shopping, what are you thinking for me? <laughs> I'm going to get some new clothes. And I can't wait to, oh, this will look so nice on me. But when you go shopping for Krishna, you think, wow, that cloth, I can just see it on Radharani, I can see it on Krishna, how it will look on Radha and Krishna. So yes, that's how you can use your thinking in a high, in a high way. You decorate Krishna with all that beautiful cloth. Or if, suppose you see a flower, some flowers in the shop, and, and you think, let me smell that, like that. <laughs> that's for you. <laughs> no. So, but if you're a pujari, then you look at the flower and you think, oh, I can put that on Radharani's ear like this, or maybe I'll put it in her hand that she can give it to Krishna, and then or I'll put it here in, on Krishna's flute. I'll put that flower there. So you see the world in a whole different way. So this is part of thinking, thinking for Krishna. Thinking, oh, wouldn't it be nice if, if my friend also got some prasadam? Let me bring some prasadam for my friend, and I will feed my friend, and they will get purified and they will get happy. So thinking, yes, we can use our thinking in so many ways. Now feeling, how can we use feeling for Krishna? How do we use, because especially girls, they're into feelings, they're into emotions, they're into relationships. But the highest relationship is with Krishna, the highest feeling is with Krishna. So if we, how can we use this feeling for Krishna? Yeah. You have your hand up? No. Uh, is that cushy with your hand? No, you're just like this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd just like to share it. I've not uh, applied it. Uh -huh. but, uh, his place, Kamal Lachan Prabhupada used to say to Samhita that you should use your ears for Krishna. Okay, Kamal Lachan Prabhupada used to say to Samita, yeah. use your ears for yes, Krishna. Your ears, your ears. Tears. Use your tears. Cry for Krishna. Prabhupada said that too. When you chant Hare Krishna, you should cry when you're chanting and say, Krishna, please accept me. And we can use our feeling for Krishna. That is, um, our, we're in Gyanamaya now, Anamaya, food. Food for Krishna is easy. You just offer it to Krishna, he will eat and you will get spiritual food. So eating, we can spiritualize sleeping. You should all dream about Krishna now. And <laughs> the way to do that is, before you go to sleep, you read something, Krishna book. Prophet had us read Krishna book, you read Mahabharata, Ramayana, and then you will dream about Krishna. You will dream spiritual dreams or the deities, you'll dream about the deities, about the Krishna. One time when I was Pujari, I was having dreams about the deities. I was taking care of Radha Govinda. And one time I had a dream where the deities came off the altar and they were just playing around on the floor. And I said, and it was time for Shringa Arti. And I said, listen, you have to go back. They're not going to understand. <laughs> you have to go back on the altar. These people will not accept that you're down here playing. You have to go up, back, go back. 
<laughs> so that's, you can sleep for Krishna, uh, like that, you dream. And also, sometimes you get bad dreams. And if you get a bad dream, the best thing to do is to chant Hare Krishna in that dream. And all of the people who are chasing you, they will go away. Or if you might have even, you might be dying in your dream, then you go, Hare Krishna, Hare, and then you wake up and you say, oh, it was a dream, it was okay. And so and that happened. My son, when he was four years old, he used to have bad dreams about demons, rakshasas. He would see them and he would describe them to me, different colors, different shapes. So I taught him to chant Hare Krishna. So first time he said, yeah, okay, last night I, the demon came, I chanted Hare Krishna. I said, so then what happened? He said, then the demon just exploded, like that. So you can sleep for Krishna, but um, not during your chanting. You don't, <laughs> you don't sleep during your, while you're chanting. For, when you're chanting, you chant for Krishna. Um, but uh, at night, when you're supposed to sleep, then you can sleep for Krishna. That's the time. When you normally sleep, not during Bhagavatam class or during Japa or anything else. No, you should um, sleep for Krishna. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Yes, you can have children for Krishna. And that there is a process called Gavradana Samskara. You have to chant 50 rounds before you have the, the time of conception. You chant 50 rounds, husband and wife. Then you will, get a, you will attract a soul that's pure soul to come as your child. And you both chant 50 rounds and uh, yeah. So that's called Garbhadan Samskara. If you do this Garbhadan Samskara, making for Krishna, then uh, you will get a child who is a, uh, a, a saintly person. And that child will help you in uh, your spiritual life. Just like my son again. Now he's 27 years old, but I'm a mother, so I'm still attached, and I'm still trying to tell him what to do. And he says, Mom, listen, I'm 27 years old now. I can do, I can take care of myself. He's got a wife and family. And he said, and anyway, you're supposed to be Krishna conscious. You're supposed to be detached, aren't you? I said, okay, <laughs> you win. <laughs> you win that argument. So yeah, your child will help you to become detached and to become Krishna conscious in this life, especially if you have a child, if you do this, Garbhadana Samskara, uh, and you can have pure children. You can bring children into this world who will save the world, and save you as well, of course. They will save you, they will save the whole world. So this is mating for Krishna, and then we have family life for Krishna, yes? Uh, that all the family together, they help each other in spiritual life. They help remind each other of Krishna, they help uh, serve Krishna, that's family, marriage, and dharma, artha, kama, that's covered, making money for Krishna also. And when you have a family, then you, uh, charity is for the grihastas, to give money in charity. So when you give money in charity, then you purify all your money, otherwise the money that you make May, t may take you down. It may cause anxiety. It may cause fighting in the family. Uh, just the money itself. The way to purify it is to give in charity to devotees, to Krishna consciousness. And for different functions, for marriage, if somebody dies, you make a feast. If you're going to have children before that, you have a feast. Not for the whole, not for the brahmacharis. But you have a feast for Simbri Hastas. You have you invite them and say, okay, we're going to have a child, we want to have a child, and we want you to bless us. So all of it, everything can be spiritualized. Uh, even these other levels of realization. And then we have Jnana Maya. Oh yes, we were talking about feeling. So feeling, how to feel for Krishna. Uh, we, when we chant the holy name, we can cry. Like, have you, any of you seen some small, small babies crying for their mother? Now, the mother can tell if the baby's serious or not. Sometimes the baby just cries for no reason. And the mother can tell but when the cry is genuine. So, Krishna can tell when our cry for him is genuine. Please accept me. Please help me. 
please give me your association. I want to see you, I want to be with you, like George Harrison, maybe you heard about George Harrison. He has a song called, My Sweet Lord. I really want to be with you, but it's taking so long, my Lord. I just want to be with you. So this is a feeling for Krishna. Feeling, when you go into the temple and you see the deities, you feel, oh, I am with Krishna now. He's so beautiful. Let me mm, try to speak some words of appreciation. Let me pray to him. Let me glorify him. Let me chant his name. So this is feeling for Krishna. Thinking, feeling, and willing. Now, how can we do willing for Krishna? What does that mean? Willing for Krishna. Does everybody know what is the word willing means? It means you decide to do something. You have a decision. You make a decision. I will do this. So, what could be an example of willing for Krishna? What kind of decision could we make about um, doing something for Krishna? I think these ladies over here, they're making this outfit. They decided, okay, today I will help with this flower outfit for the deities. That's willing for Krishna. All the ladies over there making the flower decoration, they are willing for Krishna. They are doing service for Krishna. What is another example of willing, doing something? Mm -hmm. Bring your children close to Krishna. Okay. Yeah, I want to bring my children close to Krishna. Yeah, I'm saying uh, all the children. All the children. I mean, uh, Krishna children. You, you want to bring all of Krishna's children, so we're all Krishna's children. Yeah, not just the small ones. The big ones are also Krishna's children too. The mothers are also Krishna's children. The fathers also. So that's nice. That's a very nice um, desire. Willing, another way to explain willing means desire. That we have desire to do something. I desire to do this, I desire to do that. So it's really nice. A devotee like Srila Prabhupada, when he would see people, he would look at people, he would think, oh, they're suffering. Let me help them. Let me connect them with Krishna. Just like sometimes in Vrindavan, I'm in the temple and chanting, and I see a small child, like two years old, three years old. They lost their mother. They lost their father. They're just wandering around and looking and looking. First they start looking. Then they start crying and crying, and then... You take the child and you, and you go to one person, is this your mother? No. Ah. You give him a sweet, ah. <laughs> nothing makes the child happy. Only when you finally find the mother is the child happy. So all of us in this world are like that baby. Where, where Maya is telling us, here, I'll give you a TV. Ah, I'm not happy on a TV. I'll give you a nice cell phone. Ah. No, that won't make me happy. I'll give you so many nice things. No, I want my mommy. So Krishna is our real father, our real mother, Radharani and Krishna. We won't be happy until we're in the lap of our real mother and our real father. So the devotee, he knows that. So when he sees somebody who is not connected with Krishna, then he says, oh, let me help this person. Let me bring him back to his real mother and his real father. That happens so many times in our Vrindavan temple. Just small children get lost. Even big children, even like eight, nine years old, they start crying too. Because it's a big crowd and, and they lose their parents. So how, that's how the devotee sees. So, let me see. Ah, I'll tell you something Prabhupada said about the level of Gyanamaya, science. A great scientist should endeavor to prove the existence of the Lord on a scientific basis. So that is our Sarup Damodar. He was a PhD and he wrote a book, Scientific Basis of Krishna Consciousness. And uh, now actually science is going in the direction of consciousness studies. And there, before then nobody would accept there is such a thing in science as consciousness. Now they're starting to accept that idea that there is consciousness. Arts, that is very easy. Music, dance, 
I think we're supposed to have a dance today also, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and if you are an artist and you can paint pictures, and if you want to make films, yes, also, you can make films for Krishna. You can be an actress or actor for Krishna, of course we have actresses here, no actors, but that's okay. You can be an actress, you can be a director, a producer, a, a writer. You can write Krishna conscious movies, actually. And I think uh, even some of the movies nowadays are going in, in the direction of God, at least, maybe not Krishna. But actually there's one, there is one called Avatar, I saw it, and then the, the star of the show is blue. So I think they must have read about Krishna, and Avatar is definitely a, a Christian conscious word. It means the Lord who descends, uh, incarnation. And I, he might, maybe he had Tilak too. I don't remember. I don't know if, I, if anyone saw that movie. He has Tilak, yeah. He has Tilak. Okay, there you go. So uh, even if the movie wasn't Christian conscious, but it still gives you some makes people start to think, well, maybe, you know, blue people do exist, you know? Like Krishna, Krishna exists. He's blue. He's, he's blue, he's beautiful bluish color. Tila. So maybe that film was made by a devotee, who knows? Or somebody who read Prabhupada's books, Avatar. And it was about a different world. Of course, he was more like a monkey, I think, I don't know, more like Kanaman idea. He had a tail, no? <laughs> I guess it was a mixture of Rama and Krishna. Uh, actually, uh, we will talk tomorrow on, on um, Lord Chaitanya's appearance day about the six-armed form of Lord Chaitanya. That uh, how he has six arms, uh, two of them holding the water pot and sannyasa danda, two of them holding the flute as Krishna, and two with the bow and arrow as Ram, Ramachandra. So that is there. So Vigyana, Vigyana Maya, now that's the fourth level, we're going to move up to the fourth level. And this is about the soul. Now, Srila Prabhupada one time went to visit a college um, that is where they teach bat oh, I MIT. Now here you have IIT, you have many IT institutions. So that was MIT in America. And Prabhupada, he started, he said, so, um, where is your Department of Technology to understand the difference between a dead body and a living body? Where is your Department of the Soul? And they said, oh, Swamiji, not in MIT. <laughs> not in IIT, you won't find Department of the Soul. That is not there. And, and, and it's quite amazing because uh, we, that is who we are. We are soul. So that should be the main topic of study. Uh, instead of studying the real thing, who we really are, we're studying something who we are not, this body, this mind, these things we are not. But that's the main thing you study about in school. And then at the time of death, finish. So it is good if you have, if you study about the soul, that is called Vigyana Maya, Soul study, Brahman study, uh, Brahman realization, what else is written there? Moksha. Yes. When you understand that I am a spiritual being, then you will realize the goal of life is liberation, to go to the spiritual world. That is goal of life. And then we have the last one, Ananda Maya. Oh, but before we go there, I want to. I'm going to give you a question here, because you all went to school, you're all educated, you're all students. Have all of you heard about Alexander the Great? You have heard about him. Now, he, he came to India, actually. He, was, he conquered part of India, I believe, when he was on his tour. But he got some association on the way of the sages when he came to India. And uh, there is one story about him that uh, he was going on the road and in the middle of the road there was one sage sitting in meditation and alexander was a very intelligent person and he realized oh here is the saintly person so he got down he went in front of the saintly person and he said is there anything i can do for you and the saintly person said could you just please move away you're blocking the sun this is all i want you to do just move please 
So, you know, then he understood, you know, the sage, he doesn't care for all of my money, all of my fame, all of my glory, all of my things, he doesn't care. So Alexander, at the time of death, he had some realizations. And just before he died, he told his generals, I have three wishes. After I die, I want you to do these three things for me, right after I die. So number one, I want the best doctors to carry my coffin, my dead body. They should carry my coffin. You know, coffin in, in the West, they bury the body. And so it's like, here they carry on the stretcher, you know, so it's different. But there, he said, I want the best doctors to carry. Second wish, all my money, all my wealth, all my jewels should be scattered on the road on the way when I'm going to the cemetery. All of my money should be scattered on the road. Second wish. Third wish, I want my hands to hang loose outside of my coffin for everyone to see. Now, isn't that, aren't those interesting wishes? Now, so I will ask you, first of all, why did he say, I want the best doctors to carry my coffin? Who can, yes? Because even the best doctors cannot save you when it's a time of death. Even the best doctors cannot save you in time of death, yes. So he is trying to tell people, just see. Here are the best doctors, they could not save me. Very good. Now, wish number two. All the money should be scattered on the ground on the way to the cemetery. Why? Why should all the money be thrown? Yes? When you die, you will not take any of that. Right. It's you, you're, it stays on earth. All the money you got will stay on the earth when you leave. So, number three. The hand should be hanging loose outside so everybody can see. Why? Why the hands? Yes? Exactly. You go empty-handed from this world. So, isn't that very interesting? Desires of Ele last three desires he had on his deathbed. Yes. Uh, Perlai Maharaj says on the first one about the doctors, that um, whatever, whatever remedies they give you, um, they cannot protect you. It, unless, Prabhupada says, unless Krishna says yes, the medicine won't work. If Krishna says no, your medicine won't work. And, and, and if it's your time to die, the doctors cannot do anything. They cannot, you know, and Prabhupada often challenged, he challenged the doctors, he challenged the scientists, okay, now this person, uh, you say that uh, death means some chemicals are missing. So give those missing chemicals and bring them back to life. If some chemicals are missing, give those chem which chemicals are missing now, you give them, bring the person, give injection and bring the body back to life. No, it's not the chemicals, it's the soul that's missing from the body, not the chemicals. So, the treasure we cannot take, actually, what we do take something with us at the time of death and that is our good and our bad deeds that goes with us if we have lived a very sinful life and we have been making money by sinful means that will be our ticket to the lower planets to the hellish gods if we have been doing good things we will get a ticket to the heavenly planets and if we have been serving krishna and doing spiritual things We'll go out of this world and back to the spiritual world and don't come back and live eternally. And the age in the spiritual world is 16, even 12, even 10. We are very young and we are called Kishor. In the spiritual world, everyone is Kishor. Everyone is very, very young and beautiful. So that is that is our nature and that's why we don't want to get sick because it's against our nature we don't want to get old it's against our nature we don't want to die because it's against our nature we're meant to live eternally full of happiness and full of knowledge so vigyanamaya means 
Alexander the Great, he had some of this understanding that he was not the body. And he said, uh, actually, there is one thing which is most, most valuable and the most precious treasure of all that you have in this life. Um, who can, who, it, one word actually, there's one word that Alexander said, this is our most precious treasure. He was not a devotee, so it's not going to be a devotional word, but it's a very interesting word that he chose. And that word is, before I tell you, who, who can, anybody have idea? What, what's it? What could be our most valuable treasure? Time? Ah. Yes, you got it. Very good. Ah. Time. Time is more, our most valuable treasure. Because if you give your time to somebody, you're giving your life to somebody. Quality time. Now they say in the modern psychology, modern, whatever, they say time, quality, you must give quality time. So we say that, give quality time to Krishna. He's sitting and waiting for you. He's just sitting there in your heart and he's waiting for you to give him quality time. And he's going to wait forever. He, he's not going to leave you. He's your best friend. He's going to sit there and he's going to wait until you give him quality time. And they say that for families. You should give your children quality time. So quality time means you you listen to them and communicate. And also, ah, our little our little demigoddesses have come. <laughs> Who are you? Bumi. Okay. I couldn't hear your names, but I'm sure they're very nice names. <laughs> Bumi and Naisha. Bumi and Naisha. Okay, very good. So very soon we will see how we can use the arts in the service of Krishna. And uh, so time. So then Alexander, he, his realization was that time, why is it time our most precious treasure? Because it's limited. It's not unlimited. We have a very limited amount of time. And as students you can realize that. You don't have enough time. And as family people, as mothers, fathers, parents, you don't have enough time to do everything you want to do in life. Time is the most precious treasure. So when we give someone our time, we give someone a portion of our life that we cannot get back. So it's a very, very valuable thing to give your time. So this is what Alexander says, and this was the last thing he said before he died. The best present you can give your family and friends, including me, is your time. May God grant you plenty of time, and may you have the wisdom to give it away so you can live, love, and die in peace. So this is Gyanamaya the Gyanamaya. It, it can be also Gyanamaya, that is willing, it can be under the category of willing in, in Gyanamaya level, that how to use your time. I want to use my time in a very good way. So, of course, for us, the best use of time is to spiritualize it. Chant Hare Krishna, very good. Chant Hare Krishna and make garlands for Krishna like these ladies are doing. They are buying their tickets back to Godhead, to the spiritual world, by service of Krishna. You use your valuable time in his service. You save, save your time. You save your time. Try to use it uh, in Krishna's service. So, Ananda Maya. When we go to the highest level, then we can experience real love. There is an exchange of love on the Ananda Maya level. And actually, this can also be called, many people say, this is the purpose of life, love. Love makes the world go round. But unfortunately, the love that makes the world go round in, in this world is often not love, it's lust. Because when you when you what some, suppose somebody said, I love you, I love you, what do they love? They want to enjoy you. That's what they love. When they enjoy you, then they love you. And if you don't make them happy, then they don't love you anymore. <laughs> so it's temporary. But real love is eternal. And the real love is based on the soul. 
the soul, love soul to soul, and finding your soulmate, even that is in the modern language. But the real soulmate has to be spiritual, because soul is spiritual. Soulmate is not body mate. But actually, when they talk soulmate, what they mean is body mate. I have found my body mate that matches my body. But actually, this is not the real relationship. It's a temporary relationship based on some person you haven't ever seen. Because when the soul leaves the body, have you seen the soul? No, you don't know what the soul looks like. You don't know what the person looks like. All you know what it, it looks like is the body. And what happens to the body? It goes and gets burnt. So that was not the person. You never really saw the person. So we want to experience soul-to-soul -soul relationships. And uh, that is all based on having a relationship with the Supreme Soul, Lord Krishna. And if you have that relationship, then all your relationships become very happy. Very, very happy relationships. Um, and that will keep you, because in this life there will always be problems, there will be storms. And uh, even in your, your relationships in this world, especially in relationships in this world, there will be storms. So how to go through those storms? You need to think, feel, and will on a spiritual level. And then you can bring the relationship up to a spiritual level. And then it can be eternal happiness. The husband can take the wife back to Godhead, the wife can take the husband back to Godhead, the children can take the, the parents back to Godhead. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says that if you become a pure devotee, high, high devotee, then 100 generations of your family before, 100 generations of your family after, they will all get liberation. They will all get freedom from suffering in this world. And if you become a middle devotee, it means like a preacher, you're not completely pure, but you are preaching, then 14 generations before, 14 generations after, they will all become purified and liberated. And you just become a beginning devotee. Not such a great one, just a little bit you do. Three generations before, we'll get liberated. Three generations after, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your mother, father, you will liberate them. Just start chanting Hare Krishna. Just take some prasadam. Just do a little seva. And you can liberate your family and yourself, of course. I mean, it's not like Prabhupada said, we don't have an export business that we send everybody back and we don't go. We also go. <laughs> not like you liberate everyone and you're still stuck here in the material world. No, uh, it's not an export business. Uh, we, we send everyone and we also go with them. So this is the goal of life, that we should go to our natural, happy home in the spiritual world. And even on these other four levels of lower levels of realization. The first three, they can be material also, it can be called material, is a relation with the body, a relation with the mind. So it can be also a material goal of life. But it doesn't have to be material. You can make it spiritual as well. If you do yoga, yoga, the real bhakti yoga, linking with the Supreme, linking with Krishna. All of these can be connected in Krishna consciousness. So let's see if I have anything else to say to you. Mm -hmm. Right. That's about it, actually. And uh, so, do you have any questions about this? Oh, on the Ananda Moya, maybe you can write chanting, dancing, feasting. Um, okay, yes? Yeah. Uh, you told that that time is limited. Time is limited, right. But our soul is eternal. Yeah. So even when we die, we don't actually die. Right. So we don't die. The, only the body does. Yeah. So if the soul is eternal, even the time has to be eternal, right? Yes, be time is eternal. Life. Right, very good. I mean, so then time is... But time is eternal, that's a fact. But if we have a... If we misuse our time that we have in this limited... Uh, body, like now, now we have a material body, so time is limited in this body. And if we misuse it, then we're going to get another body, and it may not even be a human body, it may be a dog or a cat body. 
Uh, yeah, so the point is that don't misuse your time in this body is very limited. And now we have the chance. And because we have the human form of life, we have such a great opportunity to get free. The soul wants freedom. The soul wants to get free from the cage and have a spiritual body. So if we use our time in that way, then we can make progress. We don't have to come back to this endless cycle of this body, that body, this body, that body. And we go straight and we get a spiritual body. Okay, very good question. Very smart question. Yes? Mm -hmm. So we need to try for Krishna. Right. And Krishna knows when it's genuine and not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't really come out. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, even if we want it to, it doesn't come. That way. It doesn't. The genuine cry doesn't come. Mm -hmm. How do we get there? Okay. Her question is: Even we want to have the genuine cry, but it doesn't come. So you have to start somewhere. So by by crying anyway, then it, the genuine cry will come. And, and another thing you can do for when you're chanting your japa, sometimes you're feeling angry, sometimes you're feeling depressed. These are all feelings. Frustrated, uh, hurt, put it in your chanting. Just start chanting in an angry way or chanting in a frustrated, or chanting in just any way. Put your feelings in your chanting and it'll get purified and the real feeling will come. Yeah. That is the uh, advice of Giri Raj Maharaj. That you have some feeling, put it in your chanting. Put it in your chanting. Like myself, I was doing that when my son, he was seven years old, he went to Gurukul and I was missing my son, Govinda. So I said, Govinda, Govinda, and then eventually, you know, I started, it was starting for Krishna also. You start feeling it for Krishna. It starts with your child. Then it goes for Krishna. Also, when he was in Gurukul, I could we couldn't associate, but we were in the same temple. But they used to, the the boys used to stand his class in Mangalarti in front of Gordi time. Now I was very attached to Radha Krishna. I never went in front of Gordi time. But when my son started standing in front of Gordi time, every morning I was there in front of Gordi Tai's altar, and I got an attachment for Gordi Tai. <laughs> but it was because. At first it wasn't a pure attachment, just like uh, Jamila, he at the time of death, he chanted the name of his son. But then, after he chanted his, he was thinking of his son, but then when he chanted, after he chanted, the real Narayan came in his mind, he remembered Krishna. And then the, the Vishnu Dutas came to save him. So even if you do, if your cry is not genuine, that's okay, you, you, um, you begin. And when you are in a difficult situation, then your cry does become genuine. Just like there is an example in Jaduna Swami gave. He was traveling in an airplane. And the airplane was having a hard time landing because every time they tried to land, a big gust of wind would come and like this, and then they couldn't land. So the first time it happened, Maharaj was going, Krishna, Krishna. And then again it happened the second time. So then he was going Krishna and the Christians started going Jesus, Jesus. And the Muslims were going Allah, Allah. But the man next to him, he said, Swamiji, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in these things. So it looked like third time came, the plane went like this back up. And the atheist said, what is that you're saying? <laughs> What is that your? <laughs> and so he taught him, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And the pilot said, okay, we're going to try one more time, and if we don't succeed, we're going to go back to where we came from. So again, the plane went down, and everybody was chanting the Lord's name, and the atheist was going, Krishna, Krishna, and the plane landed. <laughs> so this is when we will, we will have the genuine cry. Because life is difficult, and when the difficult times come, if you turn that way to Krishna, the cry will be genuine. The cry will be genuine. So that is the example. And then, and, and so then after they landed, Maharaj said to the man, uh, so now do you believe? And the man said, maybe. 
<laughs> so then my heart said, okay, here's my card. If you, need, if you have any questions, you can contact me. <laughs> so yes, uh, even there's a saying in America, there are no atheists in the foxholes. Foxholes means on the front, the front line of the battle where they dig into the ground. Everybody believes in God. And that was the experience of one of our soldiers in Iraq who was a devotee. He was a devotee. His name was Partha Sarati. And he was in the front lines in Iraq fighting. So he would be chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And other soldiers, what are you saying? How do you oh yeah, okay, I'll chant too, you know. He says, This will this will save you, this will protect you. But some of them they were not, you know, he was running after them with the books and they were running away from him. You know, he would try to chase them and give them Bhagavad Gita, some of his own soldiers. Uh, and, but then, so one of them who was like that, then finally his time of death came. He, a bomb exploded and he was dying. And then he asked, okay, tell me what was in your book. <laughs> and so, yes, um, time of death will be our final exam. Now you have your little exams. Uh, they are a preparation. Uh, the real exam is after you leave your college, after you leave your studies, the life exam, the school of life. We are all in the school of life, not just the students. Also the teachers, also the parents, everybody's in the school of life. He said, we all have our exams in that school of life. Everything in life is meant to teach you something, some lesson. So we have to learn when something happens to us that's difficult, that, okay, so this is something is given to me by Krishna. The, the real attitude is this is the mercy of Krishna. And now I may not understand why this is happening, but later on I will, and I can say uh, very truthfully that this has happened in my life so many times that things happen I don't understand. Then, like 10 years, five years later, I look back and I say, wow, that was the best thing that happened to me. I can see how the Lord has his wisdom, how Krishna has his wisdom. So that when you do get tested in life, when life doesn't go the way you want it to go, then you have something to fall back on. You have a, a spiritual strength. You have something inside you that's so strong, nothing can shake you in this life. The hurricanes of life, they will not do anything because you'll be so firm and steady in your consciousness, in your meditation on Krishna, in your spiritual being, in your spiritual nature. So the more you chant and hear and do service for Krishna, the more fixed you will be and the hurricanes of life and all the difficulties, they will not disturb you, they will not affect you. So we must always keep the highest goal in mind, Anga Namoya, connection with Krishna. And then if we put all of these other less lower goals in contact and it becomes also the highest goal. It becomes part of the highest yoga or Krishna consciousness. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Now we will have a dance performance. What is the name of it? Or? Okay, with Srila Prabhupada and my experience. Uh, what we learned from Srila Prabhupada is impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary. Nothing is impossible for a devotee of Krishna. So even though we feel we are not qualified, we cannot do, but for Prabhupada, we didn't even care if we we're not qualified. We didn't think I'm not qualified. We just said, yes, I'm going to do this. So I was in Calcutta in 1973. I was Pujari in the temple. And Prabhupada came. And with Prabhupada came one Sanskrit scholar. And he asked me, he said, how would you like to go with Prabhupada to Mayapur? Prabhupada is translating Chaitanya Charitama. He needs somebody to type for him. So he knew I knew how to type. He said, so all you have to do is learn how to read Bengali. We are leaving tomorrow, and here's the book. So I said, no problem, I will learn. So I had my Pujari duties, I had one hour, I looked at the book, I learned how to read Bengali, put into English, 
And off I was the next day with Prabhupada. And I was sitting in Mayapur in a half-built, under construction building. And, and there was a hole in the wall, which was supposed to be a window, but there was no window. So Prabhupada was walking, and he looked into my window where I was typing. I had a dictaphone, and I was listening to Prabhupada speak Bengali. And then I had this big, big book like this in Bengali. And I would hear Prabhupada, I would read the Bengali, and I would type in the English letters. Chaitanya Shatamrita. So Prabhupada looked at me, he said, oh, you know Bengali? I said, yes, Shiva Prabhupada. <laughs> I just learned the day before. And he said, oh, you're a very good editor. So he come to my room. So I went to his room. He said, you know Bengali? Yes, Shiva Prabhupada. So he said, then we will, you learn how to type in the Bengali typewriter, and we will do many books together. So then I had a big idea is I'm going to travel with Shiva Prabhupada, but it never happened because I had to go back to Bikujari in Calcutta. But then one Bengali Brahmachari, he was teaching me how to type in the Bengali typewriter. And I was telling him, look, you don't have to look at the keys, you just look at the paper, you don't touch typing, like in English. You don't, you don't see the key, you just see what you want to type and you type. And he said, oh, now I understand what Prabhupada told me. He said, you learn from her, you teach her, and you also learn from her, something. So, yeah, so I just learned like that Bengali. First day I joined the temple in 1970, I also learned to read Sanskrit because I was typing, I had to type Bhagavad Gita. And I had to read the Sanskrit and put into English letters. So we could do this by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, even though we did not know Sanskrit language, Bengali language, but Prabhupada gave, we had the faith in our spiritual master, so much faith that we can do anything for him. And we just to be with him, we will do anything. So that's what she wanted me to share with you, Prabhupada. Yes? You told me I also have to learn something. Yeah. Again and again. Right. What was the question? We are have, we are meant to learn the things from Krishna consciousness from previous life. You're saying? No. Okay, that's a good question. Suppose you leave this body and you go to your next birth. So, do we have to? Remember, do we have to learn again all the Krishna conscious things? No, that you don't have to. And that's the good thing about Krishna consciousness, that once you learn something, once you do something this life, that percentage will stay with you and you start from that percentage in your next life. Suppose you finish 50% this life, next life you start at 50%, 51%. Yeah, now, that, that doesn't work for other things. Suppose you learn dance, next life you have to start from the beginning. Suppose you learn English, math, you won't remember. And you will forget all, and even before you die, you'll forget it. You'll forget, forget your maths and your physics. And you'll even be, after your exam, you might forget it. You, know? <laughs> you might forget it really fast. <laughs> yeah. That will never be forgotten. That you take with you. Krishna makes sure. You don't lose anything. That's why it's so wonderful. There is no loss. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, there's no loss in this Krishna conscious. You will take everything with you. Yes. Hi, Krishna. Very good question. You have nice questions. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we will now have a nice dance program.